Check, check, one, two, one, two, coming through. My pumpkin is covered in snow. That's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. But it's all going to melt away and disappear. As is the design of nature. As it is in the world that we live in. Dark mornings, people yawning and shivering at bus stops, waiting for the driver to open the door so that they can have just a little bit of warmth. Anyway, a few weeks ago I did a little recording and it didn't record properly. Which was ironic because it was highly predictive of certain societal changes but that's Murphy's law right that's Murphy's law the one day you don't take your umbrella is the day it rains that's Murphy's law Murphy's Law, the day you sing the song to perfection is the one day that nobody's listening. <laughs> the day you rise above the tide is the one day that there are no other boats on the water. So, I've been hammering out this week the difference between fact and fiction, between fact and feelings, between principles and reactions. And I've been observing the echo chamber of reality. Yes, there are a lot of subtle references To weapons because that's the point that we're at a society where very few people can handle what is real. Very few people can handle reality. What passes for intelligence is stunningly shocking. 
what passes for intellectual content is often nothing more than fallacies strung together by the barest thread History has always murdered the intellectuals. The profane have always risen up in their revolutionary garb and slaughtered the intelligentsia for For their masters, for their masters. How comfortable it must be to have others to do your bidding for you. to do your wet work and then to clean it up hmm when I'm working with a client I have this very simple principle that I follow where I draw an imaginary line down the middle of the conversation and place all the facts place all the facts on one side and place all, yeah, place all the facts, the details, the specific pieces of information, the time, the place, on one side, and place all the feelings and emotional content and responses on the other side. And so we have a clear division between what is real and what might be real. And the truth is you can't build anything on a might. You can't build anything on a maybe or a could be. You just can't. The only thing you can build on unreal statements is other unreal statements. You can knot together as many ifs as you want. But that still doesn't create reality. It doesn't even recreate reality. And so this division of comment and content and response into 
fact and feeling is extremely important because you can filter out unreal and unnecessary content. What people think is not important. It is only important what is. What seems to be is not as important as what is. It's one of the key questions, the key questions. Can you give me some facts about that? Try to imagine yourself as a police officer trying to collect data and information. Who, what, where, when, how, Try to imagine yourself as a judicial person in a court of law. Trying to hold true to the principle that You need to do your job, and yet at the same time, judge not that you be judged yourself. So in any conversation, it is fundamentally necessary to be highly aware of the amount of facts presented and the amount of feelings presented. The reason for this is that emotions are transient, often uncontrollable, easily manipulated and intangible. That which we wish to construct in reality can, in reality, only be constructed from reality. Now you can go down the road of feelings are real. You can, you can walk down that path, but where's that going to end? Where's that going to take you? Where are you going to get to with that idea? How are you going to build on it? How is that a stable foundation for any 
sane, sensible, rational and logic decision. It's obviously not. It's obviously leading to a short drop and a sudden stop. So I have said before that to listen carefully is to forget who you are. And this is important because we all at certain times forget what we know. It's necessary to try to take a step back and to look Look at things. Look at the digital age. Look at the virtual relationships. A virtual relationship is not a real relationship. Look at the virtual friends. The virtual friends are not real friends. So you lose a virtual friend. So fucking what? They were never real in the first place. It's not that these tools can't be useful. The uh, ability to communicate with someone who is not in the same space as you is uh, highly underrated. It's it's highly underrated mostly because it's taken for granted. Don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you've got till it's gone? So listen carefully in conversation and look to see because noni no Because emotional content leads to emotional response. And that's just like trying to build on water. The conversation is sunk even before it's begun. The ideas are sunk, the results are sunk, the potential is destroyed.
another common problem or perhaps the reason why we don't regularly separate e emotional content from factual content is that we live in physical and virtual echo chambers and an echo chamber is just when you basically only only hear the sound of your own voice you only hear the reflection of your own opinion the world is full of people who think they know <laughs> see there you go they think thinking is important but thinking is not knowing those are two different things professing is not knowing those are two different things The same way that there's a there's a difference between understanding and knowing as well. So the echo chambers are everywhere because we're still cavemen and cave women. dancing by the fire in the light of place a cave we search for similarity Oh, come on, you stopped in the middle of the road. Just fucking hell. Right. <laughs> Drivers, be driven. So, where was I? Echo chambers. It's very soothing to hear the sound of your own voice. It's very comfortable to hear that you're right. Most people cannot accept the challenge of difference, which of course leads to the psychological state of cognitive dissonance. Holding two opposite ideas in your mind, believing them both to be real, which is entirely impossible. You know, the brutalness of reality is a black or white situation. 
he is alive or dead. There is nothing in between. At least not that I've experienced. Not that I can explain, not that I am aware of. And so we are surrounded by the sound of ourselves. Our friends mirror our thoughts, our feelings. Our colleagues mirror our thoughts, our feelings. Our world mirrors our thoughts and our feelings. Do, 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 do. Obviously, uh, some kind of big sports event going on at the sports hall this morning. Obviously, some event going down. It's great, it's great the way the people run out of the sports hall to have a cigarette. And then kind of stand around, look at everybody and and go back into the sports hall again. <laughs> There's another echo chamber there. So they stand talking and smoking and smoking and talking. Smoking and laughing and laughing and joking. Eventually choking. <laughs> so, don't be pulled into into emotional realities because they are they are beasts that will pardon you unless you decide to be blind to the truth Just the facts, my dears, just the facts. Just the facts, my friends, just the facts. Welcome to the real world. And beware of those echo chambers. <laughs> they're long and they're dark and they're cold. Variety is spice. Friction is warmth. Facts give you reason. Think about it for a while. This was another drive cast. More psychology 
philosophy, mentology. <laughs> Soon. Take care.